Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we're following breaking news of former General Electric CEO Jack Well. She has passed away. The hard charging former head of General Electric transformed his company and corporate America with his ruthless attention to the bottom line. The hallmarks of Welch's tenure have become part of the playbook for chief executives everywhere. Unflinching layoffs, ambitious expansion around the world, lucrative stock options for high performing executives, and a relentless drive to reward shareholders with stellar earnings. Welch massively increased the financial might of GE during his time at the top. The market value of the stock rose from 14 billion to more than 400 billion. He had passed away at the age of 84. And also breaking at this hour, the Supreme Court will hear a third challenge to the Affordable Care Act, this time at the request of Democratic controlled states that are fighting a lower court decision that challenged the constitutionality of the law. The court's review will probably come in the term that begins in October, which would not leave time for a decision before the November election. The law remains in effect. Now to the coronavirus crisis. Global infection numbers are approaching 90,000 as officials here at home scramble to slow the spread. There are currently no confirmed cases in Michigan, but people are still concerned. I don't know if we're going to go to the extent of wearing a mask over, but we're just going to be conscious of washing our hands and being around or being away from people that are like, you know, doing a lot of coughing and stuff like that. Now at noon, a closer look at the impact of the coronavirus on everything from travel to business to essential items for your day to day life. And speaking of the impact, we want to give you a live look at the big board. Now, Wall Street rebounded this morning after weathering its worst week in a decade amid rising fears that the coronavirus will ding the global economy and stunt growth. Of course, we'll continue to monitor the market for you and keep you posted on any new developments there. But in the meantime, the Federal Emergency Management Agency is planning for the possibility that President Trump could make an emergency declaration to bring extra funds and personnel to assist the administration's coronavirus response. In the meantime, officials have reported the first cases of the coronavirus in New York, Rhode Island, and Florida, which declared a public health emergency. New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo warned that there will be community spread. We're seeing already on the West Coast that there's then community spread where you lose the causal connection along the way. And we believe that's going to happen here. Uh, so we will have more cases. We will have community spread. That is inevitable. And we should point out to date, American authorities have reported a total of 88 cases nationwide with two fatalities, both of them older adults with underlying health problems. A genetic analysis of the virus in Washington state where the deaths occurred suggested that the illness could have been spreading within the community for as long as six weeks before the first case was detected. The coronavirus has killed more than 3,000 people worldwide. In South Korea, the number of cases rose to more than 4,000 and in Iran, the scale remains unclear there. Public health experts expressed concern that official numbers are unreliable. Across Europe, countries reported steady increases in the number of cases. But let's check in with Tom Costello. He has everything that you need to know this afternoon. With tens of thousands of coronavirus cases worldwide, including at least 80 here in the U.S., the federal government now trying to reassure the public it's prepared. We will have more and we will have more community cases. It's simply just a matter of math. The CDC now says it will allow hundreds of labs across the country to test for the virus to more quickly identify potential patients and track transmission. We now have 75,000 uh, tests available out there in the United States and over the next week that will expand uh, radically on top of the 75,000 tests available. But fear and misinformation continue to spread. Across social media, many, including some celebrities, have posted photos wearing face masks. Health experts say that's sending the wrong message. The Surgeon General tweeting that people should stop buying them, explaining masks are not effective for general prevention and need to be reserved for health care providers and those already sick. To help with demand, 3M is now increasing production to 35 million masks per month. In corporate America, it's anything but business as usual after the stock market took a huge hit last week, the biggest decline since the 2008 recession. And with fears mounting, giant companies, including Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and Amazon, are telling workers to avoid unnecessary trips. 
The auto industry is in trouble too, scrambling to find parts and prevent shortages, facing delays from Chinese supply chains. And now experts predict car sales could fall by as much as 2.5% this year. Some conferences around the country also canceled. Worldwide, travel is taking a massive hit as well. Delta and American suspending flights between the U.S. and Milan, Italy until late April at the earliest. United halting some flights to Japan, Singapore and South Korea. Meanwhile, retail is hurting with international supplies being held up and shipments delayed. Even some brides-to-be scrambling now to find wedding dresses before their big day. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Okay, thank you, Tom. Of course, you want to stay tuned here on Local Fours. Our coverage continues this half hour. Still to come, we're going to tell you how one country is actually using drive throughs to try and help stop the spread. Also developing this afternoon, outrage over a proposed settlement for survivors of the Larry Nassar scandal. And as Local Fours' Nick Monticelli explains, some athletes claim USA Gymnastics officials are trying to buy their silence. If you remember, there were two investigations in the Larry Nassar scandal, one for Michigan State, one for USA Gymnastics. On the USAG side of things, a settlement has been offered. The athletes are not happy about it. Today, new trouble for USA Gymnastics. Athletes are blasting the organization and the United States Olympic Committee for a proposed settlement in the Larry Nassar scandal. USAG is offering as much as $1.2 million to survivors, but in return, they would be required to release the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee, along with the former USAG CEO Steve Penny and former national team directors Bella and Martha Caroli from all claims. Three-time gold medalist Allie Raisman says that's not good enough. USA Gymnastics, the United States Olympic Committee, they refuse to take any accountability to address the issue to figure out what went wrong um, and they're they're continuing to cover it up. Raisman isn't the only gymnast with concerns. Simone Biles tweeting still want answers from USAG and USOPC. Wish they both wanted an independent investigation as much as the survivors and I do. USAG did respond to the comments saying we are deeply committed to learning from these investigations and finding ways to prevent abuse in the future. A future that seems uncertain with the Tokyo Summer Olympics less than five months away. I am heartbroken that this is still going on for many reasons, for the survivors, for the gymnasts competing. It's, it's absolutely, uh, it's just been dragging on for way too long. There was also a congressional hearing last summer which found that the USAG, the Olympic Committee, and the FBI did not do enough to protect the girls from Nasser's abuse. I'm Nick Monticelli. Local 4 News. All righty, Nick, thank you for that. Also making headlines right now, a woman crossing Hall Road in Shelby Township has passed away after getting hit and killed by a car. Police say that it was just after 1 a.m. that the car hit the woman as she was crossing Hall Road near Hayes. The victim has not been identified just yet, but was pronounced dead there at the scene. The driver did stop and cooperated with police. We do want to turn our attention out to the forecast as we take a live th look through our Windsor Sky Cam at our beautiful Detroit skyline. Meteorologist Paul Gross is talking about the return of spring, right? Absolutely. And by the way, coming up in about 10 minutes, you saw that murky Detroit skyline shot. I have a shot of the Detroit skyline on storm pins that you can't miss. We'll do that in about 10 minutes. Right now, look at these temps. Some of us are in the upper 40s to near 50 degrees. Now, there is cooler air behind a cold front coming through the area, but the developing sunshine, which I'll show you right now, is kind of offsetting some of the cooling. So we're going to actually see temps maybe rise a few degrees this afternoon despite the cold front coming through. So there's clouds to the southeast, but look to the north. There's plenty of sunshine coming in, and that will be a trend, gradual, but a trend through the afternoon. And again, especially here in the south, we should get to around 50, 52 degrees, uh, maybe a little cooler to the north. I'll be back with the forecast for the rest of the week and also a weekend that looks spectacular. All coming up straight ahead. Okay, Paul, thank you. Many Detroit homeowners struggling to make ends meet are about to get a financial break. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed the so-called pay as you stay legislation into law today. And the measure targets homeowners who have been delinquent on their property taxes, and it allows those homeowners to have all fines, all penalties and interests waived. When you look at the math, 
of people on payment plans that for now are paying $110 a month roughly on average for five years, and you can shrink that down to $20 a month for three years. We all get that math. That's significant relief. Yeah, it really is. Detroiters that are looking to take advantage of this program, they have to fill out a poverty exemption form that's found there on the City of Detroit website. In Decision 2020 this afternoon, we're just one day away from Super Tuesday when 14 states are going to go to the polls. Senator Elizabeth Warren is going to be in Metro Detroit when the results roll in on Super Tuesday. She'll be holding an event at Eastern Market that's scheduled for 715 p.m. And then Tulsi Gabbard is going to be speaking in Detroit as well on Tuesday night. Her event is at the Eastern. It's on Russell Street. And we are just eight days away from our primary here in Michigan. And it's also worth noting for absentee voters here in Michigan, there are a number of candidates on your ballot that are no longer in the race, especially after this past weekend. One is Pete Buttigieg, who, as you know, ended his campaign on Sunday. All right, so to come here on Local 4 News at noon, North Korea fires two unidentified projectiles. We'll tell you what might have sparked the nuclear testing after a three-month pause, but first a hostage situation ends in a Philippines shopping mall. We'll show you how the day-long crisis came to a close. So I've been talking to a lot of area clerks, and they have a lot of challenges facing this upcoming primary. Um, start with the fact that they need precinct workers. They don't have enough. They have an onslaught of absentee ballots. And take a look at this sample. There are nine names of people who aren't even in the race anymore. What if you've already voted? We'll have everything you need to know to make sure your vote counts starting today at 4.